Welcome to the Poe Politicking Show. Founded in 2008, Poe Politicking is a hip-hop meets self-help brand. With each interview, we teach the babies and share success secrets with you, the listener. Past guests of the Poe Politicking Show include Yo Gotti, Currency, MC Light, BG, Dead Press, Rashida, Project Pat, and more. We also showcase the future upcoming stars of hip-hop. Subscribe on iTunes and get automatic updates of each podcast episode. Popolitikin.com. Welcome back to Popolitikin.com, your home for self help meets hip hop. Make sure you go on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play. Go listen to some of our interviews for the past 11 years. 1212, I'm in the place to be with Jew Diz. How you doing, bro? What's cracking, man? I'm chilling, bro. And it's Jew Diz. I'm feeling good, man. I was ask you, uh, so what's your what's your name? I always ask the uh, guests what's their name about the artist. So you are artist too. So what's your, what's your name about? You know, uh, I get a lot of questions like that, and a lot of people mistake it for uh, a religious name, which is definitely is not. Um, it's basically my nickname, man. Uh, growing up, uh, my friends always called me Jew, J U, which is short for Julius. Um, and uh, when I was in high school, my homie was calling me Jew Dizzle and all this, and I just cut the Izzle off and just kept it at Jew Diz. And yeah, like if if I was ever uh, go back home, all my homies, family members, friends, and all that, they called me Jew or Jew Diz. So I just stuck with you know stuck with uh, what was solid for me. Yeah, and I guess I was I was reading about you on Twitter, and I was like, it's gonna be a good interview because I saw how you said um for your Twitter profile says bridging the fundamentals of hip hop into pro wrestling. So I want to ask you more about that. I was like, that's dope. That's kind of what I'm doing. I like hip hop and pro wrestling. I'm kind of doing the same thing. <laughs> hey, hey, you. So you say you uh, you seen that on Twitter? I'm not too active on Twitter too much though, but. You know, that's, that's, uh... Yeah, you had it in your bio, uh, though. It was on your bio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that on my bio. Um, during that time, I was transitioning my my in-ring persona because uh, I was doing a, a gimmick that, you feel me, that wasn't really true to my nature. You feel me? So I wanted to go do something that was beyond the surface and uh, marriage two of my, my, my passions, which is wrestling and, and hip-hop. And you see a lot of hip hop gimmicks and acts and all this, but I want to do something different. Um, I want to do something that only a black wrestler could do mm. to keep it to keep it straightforward and blunt. Like the, the route I want to go, can nobody portray this but a brother? You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, just trying to uh, bring the, the elements of hip hop, but you feel me? I'm still. Um, manifesting my character into something that portrays a a, a lot more uh, of an Afrocentric point of view. You know what I mean, and and, and something that portrays a, a lot of pride in our heritage. Yeah, let's talk. I say I, I kind of feel like I don't, I don't know if you were watching like MVP when he was on Impact for a little bit. It seemed like he was trying to do that for a minute, but then he got away from. It. I don't know if they like let, he couldn't talk about it as much no more. But it seemed like he was trying to do that. You know, hey, I, I I did my research before I decided to really dive into it, and it's a little controversial. It could be controversial, you know what I mean? It's not something that could really be commercialized. You know what I mean? It's something that. You feel me? In, in my point of view, if you true to it in its purest form, then you want to stay away from commercialization. But it's pro wrestling at the same time, and our our uh, goal is to you know attract eyes and viewers. So, um, yeah, man, it, it's 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 a niche audience as well. You know what I mean? It's a niche um, group that I'm trying to you know connect with. You know what I mean? And it might take a little time for it to build up to where it can be seen, you know, universally. But I'm cool with the long haul. Good. And then, like I said, I want you to talk about your background as a, a pro wrestler. Because I know, like I said, I, I know, I've been knowing about you for probably like the past year or so from SoCal Pro Wrestling. So just let us know how long you've been wrestling, you know, whatever you want to say. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, I started training in August 2014. Um, 
I had my first official match on a live show for SoCal Pro at, um, it was in February 2015. Um, and then from there, I, I, I branched off from SoCal Pro. I was probably with strictly SoCal Pro at my home school for about two years until I started branching off and started wrestling other places like uh, EWF. I started wrestling uh, at the formerly FCW um, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. And I got a few opportunities to wrestle in Arizona. Arizona Wrestling Federation and up north in the Bay Area for all pro wrestling and go rush pro wrestling as well. So, um, yeah, I've been in it for a little bit. I'm, I'm still new to this. You feel me? Just trying to stay true to it. But, you know, it's, it's a, it's been a very cool journey, you know. I'm doing something I always wanted to do and it's something that is against the grain from where I grew up. You know what I mean? Where I grew up, what I'm doing right now is probably be frowned upon. It's something I won't be taking it seriously, but I feel like it's a platform that can reach millions that the stereotypical norms that you feel me paths that we see are you feel me capable as in being a rapper or a ball player or something like that. You feel me? I feel like this platform can reach more people. You feel me? And it's something I'm passionate about, so I'm ready to you feel me. To the damn thing. I said, what made you want to do it? Man, honestly, bro, I was scared, bro. I just <laughs> keep it a buck. Like, I always wanted to do this. You feel me? But I didn't know how to get into it. You feel me? Honestly, I grew up watching WWE, WWF back in the days, WCW, ECW, feel me? Always wanted to see what the ring felt like. Always wanted to see what the ropes feel like. You feel me? Mm. And uh, when I was living in San Francisco, I ended up moving down here to uh, San Diego, and uh, I was looking up a, a wrestling school, and I found SoCal Pro, uh, went to a show, and um, met the owner, talked to a few wrestlers, and uh, I had put it off for like two years, and um, I had some things going on in my personal life I had to get straightened out, but uh, my former tag team partner who I started out with very first day, Joe Gamble, uh, him and my wife, they got together and really pushed me to, to uh, really try it out. Yeah, and I know, like I was saying, I know you, so you have the heavyweight belt for SoCal Pro right now? Yeah, right now I'm the SoCal Pro heavyweight champion, two-time champion. Yeah, so how that feel, you know, like you said, that was your home school, so how that feel being the two-time champion? Right now, it feels good. Uh, I didn't even get to celebrate the first rain, bruh. The first rain ended just five minutes after. Mm. You know I mean? So, looking back at that, uh, keep it a buck, it was pretty pathetic. So, this time around, I really get to uh, redeem myself and show what I'm really capable of. Um, on top of that, I feel like I've grown a lot as a competitor in the ring and outside of the ring. So, I'm ready to showcase that as well on a, on a bigger stage. Um I'm really, uh, I'm just really grateful, man, because uh, I just got back from this little injury that I had, you feel me, that took me out for a little bit, and um, yeah, man, I'm just ready to take the take the ball and slam dunk that shit, you feel me? Yeah, your arm was messed up or something? Yeah, I dislocated my elbow. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I actually was going to talk about my that. Elbow. Yeah, man. I was going to ask you as far as, like, just, uh, you know, just talk about, I guess, because some people don't understand, like, because I always, I, appre- I appreciate wrestlers more since I did the training camp, but, like, it's like you got to worry about talking, it's like athleticism, it's all that stuff, so just talk about that and, like, some of the injuries you went through and stuff like that. Um, as far as, like, um, I-, I played sports throughout my whole life. I played football, basketball, you feel me? Tried my hand in baseball, you feel me? tennis, stuff like that. But as far as, like, uh, training for wrestling, I feel like that is on par with, with football. You feel mm-hmm. me? Um, but it's a completely different beast. You know what I mean? You can you can train to death in, in football and get in the ring and get blown up real quick. You feel me? So um, I got humbled real quick. Uh, the ring ain't no joke. You got to really be be fit to be able to, you feel me, go long periods in the ring. Um, 
I've had a bunch of like little nagging injuries. Like you, you get it's all a part of it, man. When you sign up for for wrestling, for pro wrestling, bro, you know that getting hurt is a part of it, bro. You're gonna get hurt. Ain't no way you can escape it. And the funny thing with me is when I get hurt or the times that I've got hurt pretty bad, it wasn't even like it was a freak accident, you feel me? Mm. It wasn't even on the like I was, you know, Hopefully trying to do hurt, something yeah. cool or Yeah, it's just like on some, some basic stuff that I've done in training a thousand times and then it's just this one time, you know, my uh, bad luck or whatever. Yeah, I remember I had, um, when I was in that training camp, man, we was like doing some rolls and the dude kicked me in my head, man. I felt like I got a concussion or some shit. I was like, fuck. Bro. <laughs> I was like, this shit ain't me. I, I got kicked in hell, some dumb shit like this. I was like, shit, hell no. Cause we was yeah, all in man, the ring rolling. Shit. I was like, damn. Getting kicked in the head, that's, hey, man, if you would have kept going, getting kicked in the head is a little be normal to you, bud. Yeah. Big boots, drop kicks, you feel me? All kinds. Of, you're going to get kicked, man. Yeah. I didn't, uh, besides uh, dislocated my elbow, I uh, strained my sternum, mm. and I almost dislocated my, my uh, collarbone. So I had like a bruised collarbone and shoulder. Um, I chipped the tooth. I had a bunch of like nagging injuries that, I mean, if I if um, I'm in training one day and I jam my thumb, you mm-hmm. feel me? My thumb is swollen, man. This shit is all fucked up. But I got a show I'm wrestling on this Saturday. I can't. Fuck, I gotta fucking tough it out, man. You gotta tough it out, man. You can't just bitch out and and miss a show over. You feel me? Nothing lightweight. You feel me? So. So who's who are some of yeah. your wrestlers that that like who who would say your top five wrestlers? Who your wrestlers are? My top five favorite? Yeah, favorite wrestlers. Every, every time I'm asked that, it, it, it changes. changes a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I never have a solid five that I just stick to. Um, I just go with the ones like my heart that I, I grew up with as a kid. And then growing up, the guys that, you feel me, either made me laugh or I really like appreciated their in-ring in ring style. So, like growing up, to keep to keep, it, I'm gonna give you six, just to keep it fair. Uh, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Rob Van Dam, Tupac Scorpio, hmm. Chris Jericho, and I think that's six, right? You can throw another one if you want to. <laughs> I think that might be yeah, five. That, that's, that's, those, that's the Yeah, those are the main ones, yeah. yeah. Sean, Brett, Tuco, Jericho, Rob Van Dam. Hmm. Yeah, so you don't got, what about Booker T, Ric Flair like that? You don't like them like that? Uh, no, nah, I, I, I fuck with them. I definitely do. Yeah, I, I definitely fuck with them, but I think these guys... Like like Brett and Sean, like those two I really grew up on. I really wanted to say Ultimate Warrior. Yeah. But but I was I was too young to really appreciate, you feel me, what I was watching. I actually have an Ultimate Warrior tattoo. I got his face paint tattoo on my arm. Oh, for real, that's dope as fuck, man. I, I that like, was my dude, bruh. Yeah. I, mean, I had got the tattoo, and I was like, man, I got to step it up now because I'm the warrior shit. I felt like <laughs> I, was like, I, can't be, I can't be walking around with the ultimate warrior tattoo and not represent. I got to step it up. <laughs> but I got to ask, ask, yeah. ask, ask you the million-dollar question, though, because you said so. It seems like you're saying your your character is uh, pro-black, pro right? That's what you're saying? Yes. So yes, how, how you feel about Hulk Hogan then? That shit hurt me. Man, I was sad I, when I, I heard that I, shit. I was it, like, damn. <laughs> you feel me? I, I, you know, I'm the type of dude that I really don't try to let, like, shit that I can't control rile up my emotions. You know what I mean? I try to keep my emotions in check. But to keep it a blah, I was never really a Hogan guy. Mm. You feel me? So, you feel me? When I heard about what happened, I was just like, that sounds like some shit he would say, bro. He probably done felt, you feel me? A long time ago, you feel me? You don't just say shit like that and be comfortable. And 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 even though you feel me, you was being taped privately, like, 
it just goes to show like you you comfortable in the skin you in and you saying you, you mean what you're saying you feel me yeah. with the intention and the context that you're saying it so you feel me I, I don't know it really didn't I didn't even trip off him bro I just you feel me on to the next one bro cause he really wasn't even my guy anyway you feel me and then and then you was talking about you were saying earlier how like far as like being commercial so are you, do you want to go to like WWE or even AWE now or are you saying you probably won't be able to go that high with your gimmick we're not gimmick but character <laughs> um you know what I get asked that and like I would definitely like if the opportunity I wouldn't pass up an opportunity I definitely would not you feel me um I just, I, I feel like if I was to go to WWE, feel me, I would probably be handcuffed to what I, I wouldn't be able to express my true feelings, you feel me, which would probably be what would either get me really loved or really fucking hated, you feel me, so, and I'm talking about in the, in the, the in the fans' eyes, you feel me. Either it'll make me a great baby face or a great heel if I was able to fully, really express myself. But I feel like I would, you feel me, be muzzled there. Um, that's what I'm really scared of. Um, but yeah, I would try it out. I would definitely try AEW. I any opportunity, man. Ring of Honor, Impact. You feel me? It don't even matter, yeah, There's a lot of stuff out. It don't even matter. There's so much stuff out now, man. I'll be, be, be watching this. like so much uh, different types of wrestling out now. You know, it's booming again, bruh. It's mm -hmm. booming again. AEW just announced they got their TV deal today. Mm -hmm. Earlier today on TNT, you feel me? I know a few people that you know, I've actually been able to work with that's going to be on that roster, you know what I mean? So it's definitely an influence. Um, another door for more aspiring wrestlers to make it and be able to provide for their families and live their dreams. So, man, the more platforms, the better, man. If everybody can eat, then everybody can, you feel me? I'm all for it, but it's a cut though business as well. So, man, I, I just wish every brother can get a chance to, you feel me, do their thing and express their passion. And then I, I was, I want you to talk more about your passion because I see, uh, like, I saw another post, you said knowledge yourself, and just seemed like you're very knowledgeable, so I want to talk about, like, some of the books you read, what you own. Now, right now, I've been um, I've been reading this book by uh, the Black Dot. Um, he's a uh, OG in the game, man. OG, right? I'm pretty sure you heard of him. He's he's pretty big in the conscious community. Um, I was reading a few of his books. Um, uh, the um, autobiography of Frederick Douglass. Mm -hmm. um, I was just reading, ah, oh, I'm forgetting the name of this book. Um, damn, I just read it like a few months ago. It is about the, uh, uh, back in the days, the, uh, the housing agency would redline the community so um, all the, the, the blacks would be separated and segregated from the whites, you feel me, and how they would... Um, not give bank loans and basically marginalize uh, African Americans in certain communities. Um, I'm gonna have to get back to you on the name of that book. It's flipping my tongue. It's right on the tip of it. Um, but yeah, man, I, I try to stay up on um, as much as I can. It, it's it's kind of hard right now uh, trying to find a time to read. Uh, I've been trying to get back on my audio book game since. Uh, I'll be having time up in the gym. I'll just listen to something up in there. But um, I think uh, being able to, to to portray and um, really do something different in wrestling that I haven't seen before um, is going to be the key. Mm. And then I saw you also say you're a hip-hop enthusiast. So I want to ask you about that. Who are some of your favorite rappers and what you love about hip-hop? And what is hip-hop to you? That's the first question. What is hip-hop to you? Because a lot of people's answers are different. I feel like hip-hop is just African music in America. Mm. I, feel, yeah. I feel like hip-hop is, you feel me, from, from the nature of the beat, 
you feel me, to the, the, the rhythm and chants, to the same, to the dances, it all go back to the motherland, you feel me? That's a good answer. It's just another version. It, it's, just, it's, it's really just another version, you feel me, a more update and modern version of what we were doing back in the day. You feel me, before we was, you feel me? That's a good answer. Nobody ever said that answer before. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and um, yeah, through this um, uh, Hip Hop Decoded, Hip Hop Decoded by, by the Black Dot, he was touching up on this, man. It, it, it was really sinking into me, bro. If anybody get a chance to read that book, man, Hip Hop Decoded by the Black Dot, he got uh, another book called uh, Urban Culture Decoded. And uh, he was talking about how the elements of hip hop translate back to ancient Kemet. Mm. And, and, and and in the in the motherland back in back in the day, and how uh, you know the the b boy, he's really just the uh, that's the dance that we used to do back in the day. Mm. The the MC is the orator. You feel me? The leader of the chief, the leader of the tribe, the chief that was with, who would tell the stories. You feel me? And pass down the wisdom. You feel me? The beat is that drum. Mm -hmm. You feel me? That drum, that's the, the world's first instrument, besides the, the human voice. You feel me? But that drum, that's the beat. You feel me? And then the graffiti, that's the hieroglyphics. You feel me? Mm. Those, the, those are the carvings and the stories we were leaving on the walls of the, of the Great Pyramids. Mm. Yeah. You feel me? And he was just saying how like like all that translate and then he was also using uh four elements, uh earth, fire, wind and water. And how that translates to, to hip hop and, and um he was saying uh like basically water is like the M C how he spits the verse. Oh, yeah. Or or you feel me, or the the beat is the is the fire part because the beat is what gets you moving and then you feel me if it's, it's fire. Hot, you know what I mean? Yeah, bro. He was he was going in, man, and it's like that kind of like metaphysical, you feel me, type of stuff. I'm really into, bro, and I want to incorporate that into wrestling because I ain't never seen it before. You feel me? Anytime you see anything pro black, it's super militant. You know what I mean? It's you feel me, Malcolm X. Feel me by all by any means. You know what I mean and. You feel me? We not just that. You feel me? We spiritual by nature. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. that's actually. Uh, actually, like I interview a lot of guests that talk about metaphysics too. So, if you have something else you want to say about that, you can keep talking because I actually like hearing about stuff like that. Somebody getting down over there. You know. Um, Oh, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm out in the backyard. That's the, uh, the wind chime. Oh, it's windy outside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little windy out here. Uh, yeah, uh, let me, let me move to another part of the house. No, nah, my girl said it sounds beautiful, so let's, let's let it breathe. We good. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, there no, it's, it's a few things, like, I, I try not to get too deep. No, nah, man, like, go deep as you want me, on I, this show. We go deep on here. No, we go deep, deep, so it, you go talk if you want. Hey, <laughs> I, I, I fucks with it, man, I fucks with it, but it's just, like, a, a few, a few, like, uh, key things that I try to, um, I try to tap into every day, whether it's, um, meditation, I, I really meditate through working out. That's my, it's hard for me to be, you know, to still and just, you know what I mean? Mm. Meditate. So I, I do mine through working out, whether I'm on the treadmill or, you feel me, I can process my thoughts and clear my mind. Um, I honestly feel like, and I'd be, I'd be, it, it'd be weird, man, because sometimes I'd be feeling like, and I, for some reason I know that, man, my body is just is just the shell, you feel me? And it's really what's within me that that's carrying out this whole journey. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's facts. That's real talk. Like, 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 um, or I feel like sometimes I was here in, in another life, or you feel me? I'm really living somebody else's. You feel me? Past life in the current times. You feel me? And. I just be feeling it in me sometimes, man. Especially like when I be listening to music. Um, 
certain artists. I didn't even get a chance to tell you what artists I fuck with. Oh, okay. uh, but I'll get back I'll get back to that. <laughs> um Yeah, man, like uh it's it, it, it certain certain moods and certain for, you know certain times in my in my life or in my day or if I'm chilling with my kids and I, I just look back and I see how far I come and it, I just know like you feel me what's really guided me through all of this is is my spirit man my mm-hmm. chi that's inside you feel me no matter how how hard shit gets sometimes and all the shit I've been through bruh it's something bigger out there that that's that's pulling me through, you feel me? You feel me? I, I, I really feeling like it's the ancestors, bruh. Like, they, they done been through so much and they just, you feel me, they in my ear guiding me, pushing and pulling me in the right direction and, and giving me the courage to really represent them properly because it's really hard. Like, it sometimes can be discouraging to even, you feel me, Walk around with your head high and feel me? Not even, not even trip off, you feel me? Nobody in the world, you know what I mean? Yeah. I gotta be feeling sometime, bruh. So, I, I, I just, uh, I'll just leave it at that, like, you feel me? I know I got a greater purpose. Um, right now, my purpose is, is making sure that my, my, my two-year-old son and my five-month-old daughter, uh, I make sure they know their history, make sure they know everything about their ancestors, and they have pride in who they are and where they come from. Yeah, man. Like, I, I was telling you, because with me, I actually I actually just had my, um, I had a medium on the show, and even with me, I did 23 and Me. so on my mom's side, uh-huh. we related to Nelson Mandela, my dad's side, we related to Phil Ramsey. So I'm all in that stuff. Wow. I'm, I'm all to like, yeah, man, you you on point. You you're speaking truth. That's truth. So that's I'm 100 percent down with what you're saying. That's you know, you know, I I've been wanting to do that. The, you just said you did 23 and Me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've been wanting to do that or the ancestry. One of them, them DNA, uh, you know, tracers and uh, yeah, because we don't know. Really, really trace back where I'm from because, and you know what? And and to me, like, that's kind of what manifests the pride in me to really embrace it so much is because I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like if I was to take the test and find out I'm not half of what I say I am, I would be devastated. You know what I mean? But I already, like, then, I'm like, going gonna, gonna to keep it 100, man. Like, I could just, from what, how you talking and what you're saying, it ain't going to be that way. <laughs> I can just tell you, I, I can tell you can't, you, you right. Just believe in yourself and what you're saying. It ain't going to be no opposite. You probably came from some kings and queens. That's what I was thinking. I was going to tell you that before you, when you kept talking earlier, you probably got royal bloodline. You just got to check and see. It's like, you don't, like you said, man, you've been here before. Man, we all do, bro. We all got the, got the gold in us, bro. We all got the royalty in us, bro. If you got the melanin, Bro, you got melatonin pigmentation in your skin, bro, and you royalty, bro. Uh. You know, and I feel like it's so much, like, it's it's so much that we haven't been taught, like, bro, like, a lot of this shit only really been coming out within the last, like, decade, like, maybe 15 years, you feel me? Mm-hmm. And, and like, right now, I, I, like, you can see, like, it, it's pretty evident that the, uh, you know, the conscious community is, is growing in popularity uh, to the point that sometimes I feel like people trolling. Yeah. But uh, yeah. you see a lot of that sometimes. But I feel like uh, some people get, you know, get slander for, you know, trying to trying to embrace a lifestyle that they really not, you feel me, living or, or trying to, you know, partake in, you know, in the right way. But uh, I honestly feel like it don't matter where you are in your life or what you done did in your past. If if you gonna do it, then you gotta do it right. And it shouldn't be no shame if you late in the game. You feel me? Like if we telling people to wake up, and if our our whole slogan, our ideas, you know, we want people to wake up and really see what's going on. You feel me? Why shame them if they late to the game? Yeah, because time don't matter like that. You feel me? <laughs> I was saying, uh, you want to talk about the rappers you was like, you like though? Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, man. I, I like a lot of old school. Like, I'm from San Francisco, so I got a lot of, like, this. Uh, I'm really into everything, bruh. Anything hip-hop, bruh. But I really fucks with the old school, bruh. Like, motherfucking Big Daddy Kane. Motherfucking Tribe Called Quest. Y'all don't know if you really want to call them old school, old school. Because it was some, some slap the golden era. Before them, you feel the me? Golden the golden era, golden basically. Era, bruh. The, the golden era. That's my era, bruh. I love the the... The, the origins. I love the story of how hip hop started, man. How it came from nothing. How it was really just our, our whole energy and, and, and spirit manifested into a new art form that we created from the ground up. And now it's the motherfucking biggest motherfucking industry in the world. Got the every other race fucking with it. They the kids world. fucking with it. <laughs> every other race kids. You know yeah. And, bruh, for real. For real. And, for, and, and bruh, that's just a one then the thing about the, 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 part the, of our greatness. But then the, the, crazy, the thing about it that gets me, though, is they think they really be on our culture, but the shit the rappers talk about it, they ain't really what well, we off that shit they been talking about. They think they on the, that shit, they think they on the cutting edge, though, but they be late. By the time they nah, get on what we they, on, we on something else, huh? Yeah, yeah they definitely late to the game, bro. They de- they late to the game, and I hate when motherfuckers try to, you know, like I don't know. I don't want to say like appropriate the culture. You feel me? Because yeah, I talk about that all the time. It's hard to say. <laughs> I you actually know, interviewed the dude that wrote that say. book, Culture Vulture. I, so I be talking about that all the time. Man, it's a lot of them. It's a lot of them, bro. And you feel me, but like if I feel like if, if you're gonna be part of the culture, you feel me. Even though, feel me. Keep in mind the gatekeepers to the fucking culture is like non-existent. You feel me? Hip hop is a, is is welcoming to everybody, bro. No. Like you can go halfway across the world and you'll find hip hop. You know what I mean? Somewhere. Mm-hmm. So I just feel like if you're gonna do it, you gotta fucking like show some respect, man. Motherfuckers have died and sacrificed their lives and their families. You feel me? For this shit, and that, um, and the same thing with wrestling. I was taught that the same thing as well. You know, you feel me? There's a lot of people out there. A lot of wrestlers who sacrifice their lives, their families, send me everything mm-hmm. to entertain the people. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man. But back to the rappers, bruh. I fucks with the Golden Era, all that. Tribe Called Quest, Far Side. I'm actually about to see them in Wu Tang, Far Side, um, Diggable Planet. I'm about to see them um, next month. Yeah, I got to ask you. First time seeing Wu-Tang, so I'm, I'm happy about that. I got to ask you a question, man, because it's, it's like a running theme on my show. So who's the better rapper to you, AZ or Eminem? You see, if you ask the casual motherfucking fan, they're going to say Eminem. I know. <laughs> But AZ been hard way before Eminem ever even dropped. And then I was telling, I was trying to tell him I had to argue. It was a black guy. We did a bait on the show, and I was trying to tell him you have to look and see what a- what AZ like. Look what each rapper did for our culture, though, not just, just with the rap. But they they ain't getting it. So I was like, whatever. I got to leave it alone. Yeah, he, he took it to the nub. When you said you got to keep it, it, when you ask who's the better rapper, you got to keep it straight on that lane. Who's the better rapper? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Some people gonna say Eminem, some people gonna say A Z, but to keep it up. I used to fuck with Eminem, man. The first two albums, I fucked with Tough. The third one, and after that, I fucked with the third one a little bit. Anything after that, I ain't listened to nothing. He had never dropped since then. A <laughs> Z got the classics, man. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I just love that sound. I don't know, it's just something about that sound. You feel me? He got soul music. Yeah. That's the problem. He's like, yeah, he got soul sound, music. Bro, I, I love that shit, bruh. I love that shit. Anything with some soul, some Nas, you feel me? I love Diggable Planets, bruh. I got to see them live, you feel me? Um, currently, I've been, I've been listening to... Uh, have you heard of Cambada? Hmm. Look up, look up, uh, look up the homie Cambada. Okay. C-A-M-B-A-P-T-A, bruh. He owns some metaphysical motherfucker. He owns some other, bruh, but I fucks with his shit. I'm going to check uh, them out. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I didn't even touch on the Bay. I'm from the Bay Area. I grew up in San Francisco. So, I fought, of course, I fought with, like, Too Short, E4. Like, I grew up on that stuff, so. Mm. 
Pac, all that stuff. He's like, that's that's just mandatory, bro. Like, I'm from the West Coast. Like, all that shit is mandatory. Mac Dre, you feel me? All that. Um, but yeah, like, the shit that strikes me the most, it'd be the stuff with some, with some substance to it. You feel me? So I listen to a lot of Common, a lot of Talib Kweli, some Lupe Fiasco, some Most Deaf. You feel me? I really like the conscious rap, some early Kanye. You feel me? So. Why you say early Kanye? You don't like new Kanye? <laughs> Uh, the new stuff, I, I re- nah, I really ain't diving to it, bruh. Keep it a buck, man. I really, bruh, I don't even, I don't indulge, indulge in nothing new school, bruh. Like, nothing new school, bruh. <laughs> you see, you stick to the roots, huh? Uh, to keep it a buck, I probably listen to some, 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 uh, some I Am Sue, some Problem, you feel me? Mm. Heartbreak Gang, for me, from the Bay, I listen to some of that, you feel me? But, other than that... I don't really listen to new school rap, bruh. Like, if I was to go out to the club or some shit, I wouldn't know what the fuck is playing, bruh. <laughs> like, who's your nigga? <laughs> shit, it's making me sound old as fuck. But yeah, bruh, that, I'm just not into it, bruh. Like, if the beat slap is cool, you can dance to it, but you feel me? The shit that really hit the soul is what I fucks with. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Listen to the roots or something. Mm-hmm. All right, man, I want to say thanks for coming through Paul Ticket with me. Hey, bruh. It's all love, man. I want to thank you for allowing me on your platform, bruh. Yeah, no doubt. We're going to have to uh, stay in touch, man. Like I said, uh, next time you go, your next show out here for SoCal, I'll come see you. Say what's up. Oh, yeah, most deaf, man. Check us out on SoCal Pro Wrestling, SoCalPro.com. We on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that. You can check me out on uh, all the platforms, too. G is J-U underscore D-I-double-Z. Hey, what's up? What's cracking, y'all? Peace, love, and light to the family. This is Jew Diz, and you listen to Poe Politicking. The Poe Politicking Show is brought to you by Audible. With over 180,000 titles to choose from, Audible is great for any continuous learner wanting to grow and expand their knowledge and insight. Go to www.audibletrial.com slash PO Audio and get an audiobook of your choice free with a 30-day trial. After the trial, your paid membership will begin at $14.95 per month. With your membership, you will receive one credit every month, good for an audiobook on Audible. Cancel before your trial ends and you will not be charged. So go to www.audibletrial.com slash P.O. Audio and download a free book by Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, Napoleon Hill, Les Brown, Damon John, and more. Always remember that knowledge is power.